All right. For homework, the first part of the homework is to go ahead and install the trial of After Effects. After you're done installing, you're going to begin animating one idea for about a total of 25%. To do that, there's going to be certain steps that we're going to follow and that we're going to cover in this video. Uh, the first part is to download the template. So we'll be showing you how to do that. The next part is how to organize your assets in the assets template folder. Okay. The next part is going to be how to import and organize your After Effects file and then start animating and then how to save it and zip it for turn in via UH file drop. Okay. So to get started, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and show you how to download the assets folder and it's a zip file. You'd right click here on a Mac. You'd control click to get the right click options. You'd go to download link file as or on a PC. It might say save link file as you're going to hit that. If you get this file name here with the dot zip at the end, that means you've done it correctly. I'm going to designate the desktop as my download folder and I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And what it'll do is it'll start downloading. When you're done with that, you'll just go ahead and minimize the window. And then you'll notice here on the desktop, it should be here where you saved it to your desktop next to the other assets that you've downloaded. You'll notice it's a zip file. So we're going to unzip it. So if I just double click it on here, it'll expand or right click expand on a PC and then you'll notice you get this folder and inside this folder you have a directory structure in which you're going to be filing things in. I've already created this for you and you also notice that you have the actual project template that's an After Effects file. Okay so this is your After Effects project and then this is your assets folder where you're going to be filing all your assets in. Okay so one important thing though to keep in mind is that this folder, once you file all your assets in here, you're going to need to turn in this folder every single time. And the reason for that is because your project, this project is going to be looking for the assets that are placed inside of this folder when you import them into your file. Okay. So two things that I want to stress is one is that you rename all of your files first, the way that you want them to be named. So we're going to go ahead and rename this and I'm going to call it paper texture vignette just so it's clear. And then this one is kind of like a light spots. So I'm just going to call it light spots red. And then this one is kind of like a green background. So I'm just going to call it green background. Okay, so you want to rename all your files. This one is called Wood Autumns here. I'm just going to call it Woods. Something that's easy for me to distinguish what it would be. And then this one is the sound. And this one's kind of like a nature sound. So I'm just going to call it Nature Birds Sound. Okay. And I'll just move this down here. Okay. So we have these different ones. Now, the second thing that I want to stress is that once you've named them, that you organize them within the assets folder. Because once you do import them into this file, it's going to reference that image or that video asset file in that particular location where you have it filed. Okay, so rename all of your assets first, and then we're gonna file, this is an image, so we're gonna go ahead and put it in images. And another image, we're gonna put it in images. And those I'm pretty sure I'm gonna use. I'm not too sure about this one, so I'm gonna say anything that you're not sure if you're gonna use or not, don't include it because you will be having to turn in this entire file every time. And if you have unnecessary asset, that's just going to make your loading time a lot longer. Okay. So just keep it on the desktop until you know you're going to use it and you're going to import it. Then you'd file it in. So we're going to go ahead and grab the video and we're going to put that one under video. And then we're going to get the sounds and put that one under sounds audio here. Okay. So if we take a look at these, that's filed in there the graphics. These ones here are the logos that I provide you with. These will already be in your assets folder, your images that you've chosen that you're going to be using, and then your video. Okay. And then this file will already be here. Okay. So you want to make sure you rename this. Go ahead and rename that. And then you also want to make sure and you rename this file. That's how you set up your assets folder with your template. Okay. So the next step is now importing. 
So we're gonna go ahead and open that back up. We're gonna open up your After Effects project and it should open up in the program since you've already installed it. And then what you get here, this is your After Effects project file. And you'll notice that the directory structure that's in that folder, I've already created this for you and it matches what was in that folder. Okay, so these are already set up for you. When you're ready to import, all you need to do is you're gonna do file, import, and you're gonna do multiple files because we know we're gonna import multiple files at once. And we're gonna go and we're gonna locate that folder. So you're gonna go to your assets folder and we're going to go ahead and I'm gonna just open all of these so we can see everything. And I'm going to click the sound. I'm holding down command or control on a PC. So you can multiple select different ones. And then I'm going to pick one of the logos that I'm gonna use, okay? And I'm gonna just say, I'm gonna use New Line Cinema, the white logo. And then I'm going to click both of these textures. I think I wanna use both of them. And then the woods, okay? Once I have them all, I'm gonna hit open. And this pop-up window will pop up, but you don't want to import any more. This is just in case you wanted to import more. You'd hit cancel. Okay. And then you notice that that imports all of your assets into your project bin here. And so now what we need to do is file them. So we're going to go ahead and grab the woods video and we're going to file it into video. We're going to grab the background here and put it into images. We're going to grab that texture, put it into images. The logo, we're gonna put it into graphics and we're going to grab the nature sounds and put them into audio. And we'll notice that our composition is already here. Now this composition is the composition that you're going to be compositing everything in. That's this composition here, okay? So we're just gonna go ahead and rename this one and we'll call it Iled Garcia. And I'm gonna just name it something descriptive so that I know what composition is about. And this one's gonna be Lost Boys, okay? So there we go. All right, so now you've organized your assets inside of your After Effects project. So that was the next step, okay? Now, once you have your files imported, you're actually ready to begin animating, okay? So to begin animating, you're going to select what you want to start animating first. And I usually start with my base, which is the video, okay? And I'm going to drag it and you'll notice it's really, really large. We can take care of resizing in a bit. But what you also notice is that it'll automatically create a layer for you and name it according to the name of your file, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and zoom out here so that we can fix this, the size of it. We'll just go to 25% so we can see the edges. And then you can just scale this, but I'm gonna hold down my shift key so that it constrains the proportions. There we go, and I'll just reposition it. And that's pretty good for me, okay? And now that we've scaled it, I'm just gonna go ahead and zoom back in so that we can see the full size of this. And I'm gonna go ahead and play it so you can see what the video is like. I'll hit my space bar, play. You'll notice there's some sound already there. Okay. All right, so that's the video. I'm gonna go ahead and put it back at the beginning. So that's how I import my video. Now I wanna think, okay, well, I like what's going on here, but I actually wish that it would have a little bit more movement in it. So I'm gonna actually animate this to kind of pan. So I'm going to scoot this over to the left here so that it begins here. So that's where it is at the very beginning. And then I'm gonna animate this, okay? Now you could open up here and try to look for the transform and then the position one, or you can use your shortcut, okay? I'm just gonna go ahead and open it up and I'm gonna hit the stopwatch for position that lets the program know that you're ready to start animating. And again, it created a keyframe for you here. And at the beginning, it's where you positioned it to begin with. Then I'm going to move and then I'm gonna say at the very end of this animation over here, when the whole movie has played out, I want this to be on the opposite end. So I'm gonna move it. I'm gonna hold down shift just so that it doesn't wiggle waggle on me. All right, so I'm gonna position it there. So now there's gonna be two different panning motions, the one of the actual camera and then the one that I've actually made. And we'll see how that looks. It may not be what we want, but we'll try it. We'll put the handle back at the beginning and we're gonna hit the space bar. And 
now we'll notice there's a little bit more movement in that. So now we have one simple movement there. Now the other thing I'm thinking, well, I like this, but it feels a little bit too much like raw footage. I want to add some texture to it. So I'm going to go ahead and close all this up. You frequently want to close these things up so they don't get in your way. I'm going to go ahead and close that up. I'm done using that. I'm going to go and look for my images, and I have this one here, and then I have this one. I'm pretty sure I want to use this one. I'm not too sure about this one yet, but I want this one, so I'm going to go ahead and drag it in. And by default, it's going to come in to the movie at the very beginning here. Okay. You can see the video moving underneath it, but it's just basically sitting there at the very top. Okay. So that's this one here. And now what I want to do is I want to think, okay, well, what can I use for this to make it interesting and interact with the bottom one? Well, I could apply transparency, but I don't think that's going to give me the look I want. So I'm going to try blend modes. So to pull up blend modes, I'm going to open that up there, expand it. And I'll see the blend mode here. So with that image selected, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to try, say, overlay. And that did something interesting there. We can just try different ones just to make sure that's the one we want. So I think overlay was probably the choice that I liked. Okay. Now I can just kind of, I like to just scrub the timeline and kind of see what kind of texture. Okay. So I like that. I like this little texture here. But I feel like it's still not dynamic enough for me. So I don't like that texture being just stationary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my cursor back to the beginning. And we're going to select it. And I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And I'm going to go to transform. And I'm going to make this one actually rotate. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select the stopwatch for rotation. And you'll notice it creates a keyframe here. And that's just letting you know that at that keyframe, this is where that's going to be positioned. And then I'm going to move down the timeline up until about the middle here. I'm going to grab that image, which is that image here. And I can't see the edges of it very well, so I'm going to zoom out. Now I could manually go in here and try to rotate this, but what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use the rotation here. And I'm going to see, can you see that turning there? And then at some point, like over here at the end, I'm going to want it to switch direction. So I'm just moving it over. It'll create a keyframe and it'll switch the direction. You can actually not only rotate it, you can also reposition it. So I could move the position here, but I like to just manually move things with the position. So it'll do that. All right, so we're going to put it at the beginning and then we're going to hit the space bar to play it or you can play it here. And you can see if you like that look. At that point, that's where we switch the direction. So you'll notice it starts coming back. Okay. And it may not be perfect. It may not be the way you want, but you can always edit after the fact. Okay. So there we go. Right, you can hear some of the sound kick in. All right. So we'll go ahead and stop that. I'm just going to put my cursor back at the beginning here. All right. So we're done with that one. I'm going to go ahead and close it up. Then we're going to start animation with like introduction of text. So this stuff you kind of have to make as you go. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my type tool. Okay. And I'm just going to click on the stage anywhere here and you'll notice it creates an empty layer for you. As you start typing, it's going to rename your layer. So I'm going to say from the directors and you can't hardly see the color. So I'm going to highlight this here and I'm going to change the color to like a khaki greenish black color here. Okay. I noticed a typo from the directors and I'm going to go to of and I'm going to switch to my black arrow. I'm going to reposition this. Okay. I'm going to zoom in here, put it back to hundred percent. So now if I scrub my timeline at the very beginning, this is what's happening. Everything is visible. Well, I don't want that. I don't want this to be visible from the very beginning. So to change when this starts in the timeline, say that I want it to be um, one second at about 30 frames here. And again, if you can't see where 30 frames is, this is 50 frames here. You can calculate. You can always expand this a little bit more so you get a better sense. So that's 25. So maybe around right here, around 30, you know, that's one second. You can then shrink this here. 
And now if we put the cursor at the very beginning, you'll see it's not there and then it appears. Boom, okay, just appears, okay? And it's visible for there to the duration of the movie that we have all the way to the end, okay? Well, if we don't want that, I'm just gonna shrink this back down so you can see the edge here. You can shrink this and say, well, how long do I want that to be? Well, maybe like two seconds. And the best way to test it is to play your movie and say, is it readable? So I'd put it at the beginning and then I'd put it up, it pops up from the directors of, okay, that was long enough for me to read. Okay, it might be a little bit uh, too short. I'll just expand it a little bit more. It's better to be up for too long than not long enough. Although ideally you want it to be up for just long enough. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and see. Okay, we have the duration now. You'll notice it's only visible for that amount of time, but I don't like the fact that it just pops up. So I'm going to gradually fade this in. So remember I have other options to animate here. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go to transform. And then I'm going to do the opacity because you're going to start with zero opacity and then it's going to appear. So at this point in time, right here, right where this starts, right at the beginning of where that becomes visible, the text becomes visible, I'm going to go to opacity. I'm going to hit the stopwatch. It'll create a keyframe and I'm going to set that opacity to zero so that it's not there at all. And then at about that point right there, just a little bit because I want it to fade fairly quickly. I'm going to bring it to 100%. So now if we preview it, okay. Now that might have been too quick. If that's too quick, that means that the distance between these two is too close. You can always grab it and scoot it over. And then if you play it, that was a little bit slower, okay. So then you just want to make sure that this is going to be visible for long enough for you to be able to read it. But we're going to fade it out. And I'm going to say from here, I want it to start fading out. So there it's going to be at 100. So I'll just leave it at 100. It's kind of funny. You have to set it at 100 again. And then I'm going to go here to zero. So I just put my cursor there and I'm going to bring that back down to zero. So basically what's happening here so that you understand what's happening in the keyframes and why I'm setting these at certain things here this one is at zero so it's not visible at all and then here it becomes visible so that's at 100 you'll see that 100 percent right there okay and then at this keyframe from here to here this one is set also at 100 so that it's always visible at 100 percent here but then from this point to this point then it's going to fade out so we'll notice it's 100 percent there and then from here to here it starts going down to zero so this one is set at zero here okay so that's the opacity. So that's how you would fade something in and out. Okay. So as long as you can read it, that's what you want to test. We'll play it again from the directors of. All right, looks good. So we're going to go ahead and close these up. And basically that's it. You'd want to keep continuing to animate this using the processes learning class this week and in subsequent weeks. But for now, we're going to go ahead and stop. And as long as you have about this much done, about 25% where you have your assets folder and your project named and organized and two to three layers animated, you should be fine homework wise. So now we're going to go ahead and save this file. Just go to file, file, save it, and it'll save to your folder. Okay. You've already renamed it, so it should be named correctly. Once you're done with that, you can just go ahead and close out of it. That file should be saved inside your assets template folder here. You'll notice there'll be an autosave folder here. These are just autosaves that usually happen on your um, computer by default, just in case your program crashes. So you can keep those there or throw them away. They're not very big file sizes. What you're gonna do is you're going to zip this folder back up. So once you're done with this, you're gonna right click and then you're gonna compress it or zip it up on a PC. And you'll notice that you get the folder, this one. And this is the folder that you're gonna send to me via UH file drop. Okay. Once you've sent it to me and you get that confirmation link, you're going to copy and paste that confirmation link into your assignment like you've done before. Okay. This concludes your lesson. If you have any questions, please be sure to contact me.